So now we are going to substitute these small signal modulation on the rate equation. So you have a uh, carrier density equation. So you have dn by dt is equal to j by qd minus n by tau c minus gn n minus n naught times p. So dn by dt is uh, derivative of this with respect to time. So this is going to be simply j omega nf and e power j omega p is equal to j would be jb plus jm e power j omega p divided by qd divided by qd. n is going to be nb plus nm e power j omega t. This is again divided by tau c divided by tau c minus g n. n is again going to be n b plus n m e power j omega t minus n naught. Oh, but the pain is here you have a p. So, this should be p b plus p m e power j omega t. It only looks little complicated, but if you just keep solving this, this is not as complicated. So, uh, let us do this product here and let us also accumulate the terms which are dc minus nb by tau c minus jm e power j omega t divided by qd plus nm e power j omega t. Sorry, ah, that has to be a minus nm because there is a minus here. tau c minus here again we will accumulate this n b minus n naught and d c and a c separately. So, this will be g n times n b minus n naught times p b this is the first term and minus g n times n b minus n naught times p m e power j omega t this is the second term. minus g n times n m times e power j omega t times p b which is this product the third term and I will have a term which is a product of n m p m and as before I am going to ignore that term it is a second order product. So, in that sense this is a highly nonlinear process strictly speaking it actually gives you a frequency 2 omega in the process, right. But the system does not respond to 2 omega and so you are getting away with that. It will select only, so no, 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 it has nothing to do with the modes. What is this omega? This is the modulation frequency, right, how fast you are modulating. The mode is carrier frequency, this is modulation frequency. So, this 2 omega actually means that if I am modulating at omega, I will have a response at 2 omega also. But because these terms are very small, we are kind of ignoring that response. So, this if you start increasing your modulation, depth of modulation, if you start uh, you know your I m or your J m if you are starting to increase, this will not be ignored, which means that you will start getting an output at 2 omega frequencies also. Because or under the limits that p m and n m are very small when compared to other terms we can ignore it for now. But in that sense if you were to really characterize your laser diode you will have to now look at what are the second harmonics what what are the powers modulating uh, modulating powers amplitudes at which the second harmonic starts dominating okay? and you cannot modulate beyond that power. Okay. So, now what are the DC terms now? Is there a way that we can kill all of that? Uh, so, if you look at this term, you will have JB by QD, NB by tau C, GN, NB my, by N naught. So, this is exactly similar to this. So, all the DC terms have to be 0 because those correspond to the steady state values. At steady state, these terms sum up to 0. 
uh, let's drop all the e power j omega t minus n d minus n naught times p n minus g n n n okay by the way what are we interested to find we want to know the output power or photon number so we are interested to find p uh, pm pm at omega divided by pm at zero is what we want to find but uh, what are the unknowns here i have this nm which i can now write in terms of there are three terms with nm so let's accumulate all the three terms together so nm times j omega plus 1 by tau c plus g n p right these are the terms which has nm in it this is equal to minus j m divided by q d minus g n n d minus n naught p and now i know what nm is uh, nm came from here in terms of pm so i can write it as j omega times g n uh, j omega divided by g n p b so i can write it in terms of pm j omega divided by g n p b times p m times j omega plus 1 by tau c plus g n p b is equal to by the way what is this term you can kind of simplify it and write it as g n times n b minus n naught we just recognize that that must be equal to 1 by tau p uh, sorry is that 1 by tau p yeah g n times n b minus n naught this one we said we said it's going to be 1 by tau p so this term is equal to p m divided by tau p So the job is done. Now I have to just write P m is equal to what? Which means I can pull this inside this. In the next step, I can take this. So let me just rewrite. First term was that. Second term is one by tau c times this. Third term is g n p b times this. So it is just j omega. And I have a fourth term which is p m by tau p which comes to this side. So this becomes 1 by tau p is equal to minus j m divided by p m. So my p m is One by tau p plus j omega times one plus one by tau c g n p b minus omega square divided by this is p m at omega. Now, what does the form of this equation look like? We have an omega square. We have an omega. Or I can just re rewrite this as you know, j j m divided by q d. This minus I can take multiply numerator and denominator. I can write it as omega square divided by g n p b minus j omega times one plus one by 
tau c g n d b minus 1 by tau b. This looks a little more decent. Of course, you can multiply every term by g n p b and you know you can write that omega square minus something plus something. So, if you have a transfer function like this, you have an omega square and you have an omega and you have a constant. Mm -hmm. It's a second order transfer function. What's the meaning of having a second order transfer function? It will have an oscillation. There will be some resonant frequency for the system. Right? You could find a resonant frequency for the system. Right? So let's just calculate what is uh, PM at omega divided by PM at zero. So when this becomes zero, when the omega becomes zero, what is my response? How would that response look like? Look like? This becomes zero, this becomes zero, it becomes just one by tau. So what is the ratio of this divided by PM at zero? This JM by QD will be common that goes off. So what you will have is only tau p. Uh, 1 divided by 1 by tau p. So that will be a tau p. It will be tau p. Uh, will there be a negative? Yes. There will be a negative. Uh, Uh, you can do this. So, this is h of j omega. You could do the magnitude of h of j omega. Uh, what happens at resonance? The denominator should go to at resonance what happens in the system? The response is maxing. Right? Which means the first derivative of my denominator should go to that's when the response will. So if I have a denominator, you have to, of course, you have to find out resonance. So sorry, this is not mod h of j omega. You have to find out, find out mod h of j omega. And in that, maximize the denominator. And the frequency corresponding to the maximum is what you call as the resonant frequency of the system. That's a little more involved algebraic exercise. I will leave it to you to do that exercise. Essentially, you need to do a mod of this equation and derivative of that with respect to omega and find out what is that resonant frequency. And that will turn out to be, you can check it for yourself, square root of g n p b divided by tau p minus half of 1 by tau c plus g n p b the whole square. Verify whether you are, verify it as an exercise. I will repeat what you need to do to get to this is you have the transfer function, find the modulus of the transfer function, you get a denominator and you want to, you want the transfer function to be maximum which means the denominator has to be minimum. So to find at what frequency is that happening, you take the first derivative, derivative of the denominator divided by d omega equal to 0 is what you will do. To do that, you will get this resonant frequency. What does this mean? The system has a resonant frequency, meaning it has certain maximum response at that frequency. If you plot the h of j omega, there will be some response at lower frequency. There is a frequency at which it is maximum and then it falls. And incidentally, this maximum is now dependent on your PB. 
gn is a material constant it has vg gamma a and so on depending on the bias current depending on the bias power the resonant frequency is going to be different you can put larger power and push your resonant frequency to something else remember this is not the carrier frequency we are talking about this omega is the modulating frequency you are trying to make your system on or off at a certain frequency right and in practical systems we don't want to operate anywhere near resonance why you don't want to operate near resonance because it's a non linear response here if i excite my system at that frequency i will get multiple frequencies harmonics different frequencies at the output of the system so the first lesson is your your limit to operation operating bandwidth is somewhere around the resonant frequency you will say that to be on the safe side i will operate at uh, less than 50% of the resonant frequency but the resonant frequency itself is decided by your p so i can have a control on my resonant frequency by changing my operating power